the number one promoter in the game. Hey, it's your boy Chingo Bling, and this is a podcast. You don't know what a podcast is? Get the hell on up out of here, boy. This is Chingo Chats, not political. What's your promoter name? Uh, you know what I'm saying? What's up, man? Man, man check this out, man. Look, look, you, you like comedy, bro? You like comedy? Don't worry about my name. I you love know? comedy. You like comedy? Man, check this out, bro. What are you doing on Saturday night? Uh, I don't think I got much going on. Well, we're going to be in McAllen, Texas, bro. Come through. Uh, that is March 5th. It's the Legalized Freedom Tour. What? As you can see, State of the Union. Didn't nobody have no mask, so the mask shit is over. Uh, Legalized Freedom Tour, my brother. If y'all like fresh air, if y'all like freedom, if y'all like laughter, I will see you. We got McAllen up next. Uh, Raleigh was, was a success. And now we're headed to Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. West Palm Beach, April 3rd. Tacoma, Washington, April 7th. Nashville, Tennessee, April 14th. Corpus Christi, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, Texas, May 12th through the 15th. New Braunfels, May 20th. Abilene, May 21st. Lubbock, May 22nd. Bryan College Station, two shows, May 28th. San Angelo, June 3rd. Odessa, June 4th. Austin, don't make it too lefty for me, Austin. Don't make it too lefty. Uh, June 9th. Uh, a lot more cities. Just go to chingobling.com. Of course, we have Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. And of course, we're working on Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Houston. Get all that at chingobling.com. Beautiful Houston. It's about 30 cities. There's no excuse because we will be near you. It's worth a drive, too, in case we ain't like coming to your city city. But also, let us know where you are coming from when, uh, whenever. You, so, actually, we should have like an embedded, like, secret message that like self destructs when people come to a show. So, like, not literally, obviously, but <laughs> inspect a gadget. Yeah, exactly. But like, when somebody comes to a show and is a big fan of the podcast, there should be like a little like secret something. Like, let's just say in McAllen, because the VIP is already sold out. Mm-hmm. If you're wanting VIP, it's sold out. Get Too your, late. Get your general admission still. Tickets are available. Yeah, y'all gonna be in the balcony in the nosebleeds and shit. If the if the VIP, let's just say they're all super big fans of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the? Is there like a secret handshake? Is there a secret like message? Is there like one particular? I was sent here by the Thea. That's all you got to say. I was sent here by the Thea. Y'all heard of the KGB? Well, y'all need to look into the TIA. Hey, I know y'all heard about the the CIA. You know they, you know what the CIA does, bro? They go into other countries and they do like propaganda, and they'll like take out. They'll do a coup. So we combat that. The TIA combats yeah. that. Yeah, the TIA is against that. So we go out there. The TIA, truth. the TIA will let you know when a coup has happened in your country, and you didn't even know it. But my Thea said that's a lie. My Thea sent me. Uh, speaking of um. Uh, uh, you know, pop culture and rappers and coups. Yeah. Snow the product. Who, yeah. Dude, I've known her. She's an amazing rapper. I'm sure y'all have heard of her. Um, dude, I, I, she came across my radar when she was first starting. She was like super underground. My boy Squeeze from the Bay Area. He was like, yo, this chick is the future of uh, the motherfucking rap game. Dude, I used to love watching her vlogs. Like early on, she would do a lot of vlogging and had some interesting like just characters on the vlogs with her. This is probably like 10, 12 years ago, I guess, or maybe a little bit more. But uh, I've probably I've probably been knowing her about 15 years. Probably. Crazy. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's been doing it a long time. Yeah. But, you know, people people's changes, as they say, and um, you kind of lose touch with what they're putting out there. And when you go back from time to time, it's just interesting to see where things have evolved. Well, yeah. C- should we play a little y- clip? Yeah, oh, for it, sure. It was, it was short. Um, was that on uh, somebody Instagram? D- or? Yeah. Somebody DM'd it to me. Here it is. Um, bless her heart. She's an amazing artist. Amazing. But yeah. I don't think foreign policy and geo geopolitics strategy and geopolitical strategy and like, like I said, bless her heart because she don't know what's going on with Putin. Arguably and, even domestic policy. Yeah. I mean, Biden, like, you know, right now people are being lied to. People are being played. And uh, it's very unfortunate because we went from everybody make your avatar uh, BLM to everybody put Pfizer in your avatar to everybody put the Ukrainian flag. So anyway, I think she was just trying to be funny. Uh, she's very entertaining. Uh, check her out. So Biden was like, hey, Puto, you keep doing that weird shit, and we got to show you what America does, because you already know you heard about America. And Putin was like, heard about America? Ain't nobody scared of America. First of all, the dollar's going all the way down. Y'all don't even know what the hell y'all doing internally. Also, y'all had a coup, so it means y'all ain't even doing anything about anybody fucking with y'all anyway. Plus, I was best friends with your old president, you know, the one that's trying to bring that old thing back, that old thing, the racist shit back. Y'all know what the fuck y'all are doing anyway. Plus, Florida. 
And so Putin just did whatever he needed to do. And now we are scared as hell. So I'm currently in the gym. I can't tell if I'm trying to work out for my motherfucking tour, if I'm going crazy, or if I'm working out for World War Three. because I am probably going to be recruited. Because let's be honest, I'm fucking strong and masculine and amazing. Well, she, she's dope. Yeah. Um, she's dope. She's funny. She could really, 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 really rap her ass off in Spanish, mm-hmm. in Spanish as well. And she mentioned on there, she's like, America, ain't nobody scared of y'all. Y'all had a coup. Well, guess what? She's right. <laughs> there was a coup. <laughs> God damn it, that's so funny. Just not the direction that you thought it I went. Think, I think she was referring to J6. That's a problem. That's a real problem. I think she was referring to J6, but that one, no coup. That was just a bunch of uh, patriots who were out there demonstrating, and sure, a portion of them got incited, a portion of them rioted, a portion of them got invited in. And that was more of a psyop than anything. There was so many feds involved. She don't know about that. That's going to be like, what are you talking about, Chingo? I saw it with my own two eyes. Of course, video lies and the media is full of shit. Um, She'd be mm-hmm. interesting to have on the podcast just to have a chat, you know, like, yeah, you don't have to, you know, the way and obviously she's trying to be funny at the end of that video. But when somebody comes into that kind of conversation with that kind of like aggression, it really sets a really difficult precedent to try to like overcome if you just want to chat about something. Well, I would not want to talk politics with her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we, I mean, if she's down to call in, we could like promote her tour and stuff. That's cool. Or music. But um, anyway, she's doing very well for herself. I'm very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, and, and it should be noted that from, I'm not, I'm not a mind reader, but like from her perspective, mm-hmm. she is like, California to the bone. She still lives there to this day. She lived in Texas for a while, but you know, she's from the Bay, you know, uh, her parents are from Mexico. And so her identity, of course, like this idea of Trump's races and Florida, she mentioned Florida. Mm-hmm. So she thinks DeSantis is racist. I don't know where they get this from. Maybe it's because they're about like freedom. That That's what happens, man. Like, and I know this is an RPT, so I'll make it quick and we'll move on to everything else. But, um, it's unfortunate that, the reality of how, you know, I guess the way I see things, you know, <laughs> you know the reality in my the opinion. Truth. Well, you know, like if you look at what DeSantis is really about and if you look at what Trump like really is promoting, uh, Trump obviously is like America first, be energy independent. Uh, we need peace through strength. We need a strong economy. Uh, CCP is our biggest uh you know, existential threat and, and we got to buy America, man. Yeah. Things like that. You know, now, 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 Biden, now Biden wants to be America first <laughs> and shit. All of a sudden got to buy America, man. And then DeSantis, he's worried about his state. He's worried about like not indoctrinating the kids. Stop with the masks and the political theater. Don't shut down Florida's economy. Let's actually follow the science to know, like, is it safe to open up? You know, you know, things like that. But somehow the media con- misconstrued all that into racism. So somehow, some way, all of a sudden, DeSantis is racist in the eyes of many people. Um, so anyway, um, for sure, you know, we like her music. You know, she's cool. She's like I say, man, we go we go so far back. And there's, there was like a couple little misunderstandings and stuff. But we go so far back that, you know, we're, we're beyond we're past like anything political. Like even when all my. Um, on my little, like, oh, shit, Chingo Bling voted for Trump when that whole thing hit the fan on social media. Um, you know, she got a little triggered. She left a little comment, and then she DM'd me, like, Chingo, tell me it ain't so. I deleted my comment, but what the fuck is this, man? You're going to have to explain this shit, and I'm over here at a strip club, and I can't even have a good time because I, I can't get my I can't wrap my mind around the fact that you went this way, and whoop de woo woo and she's like, I actually make enough money to be Republican, and, you know, and this and that, and I'm not... Like, basically, the the... The sp- uh, what's the word? The way all this is framed is mm-hmm. that the only reason people vote Republican is because they're sellouts and they don't want to pay taxes. And she was basically saying, I pay my fair share of taxes because I don't want to be racist. I'm paraphrasing. Right. But anyway, uh, I thought that was interesting. It got DM to me. And it's just it just further shows that, like, they want us confused by design. They want us divided. It's all by design. Uh, we all want the same stuff. We all want a strong country, strong dollar. And then she mentioned, she's like, the dollar's falling. Woo do woo woo. And I'm thinking to myself, it's because Biden. They're it's they're printing too much money. And this is an RPT. So if you want to deep dive on that, go listen to Red Pilt the Miles. We thoroughly, thoroughly go on and on about it. 
Yeah, it was a really good episode. I realize this is going to drop on Monday, so you will have already been in McAllen. Yeah. But you read all the other tour dates, so yeah. catch a show. So next stop, Naples, Florida, and West Palm Beach. There you go, exactly. Sus. Uh, you're also going to be in McAllen during the big UFC fight this weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kobe Covington. Yeah, Masvidal, Bryce Mitchell, Thug Nasty. Dude, I'm going to pull the card up real quick so uh-huh. you can see it. Um, it's It's a fantastic fantastic card bro how am i gonna be able to watch this if i'm backstage <clears throat> um what time do you what time's the show do you do you know the show time man it's usually like se- seven or eight and uh, i need to see if we're doing one or two shows you might be going yeah that's true too if, if it's one show you usually probably go up as the main card's starting mm. so you might be off stage by the time the main event rolls around but you'll definitely be missing thug nasty well i'm gonna have to go back and watch it somehow yeah for sure Mm-hmm. But uh, the fight kicks off with Greg Hardy, the uh, the former football player turned UFC fighter who has a checkered past oh. for uh, assault oh. of, a, of a significant other, I believe. Um, he's opening the card off. He's always you know interesting to fight because he's such a polarizing figure in the UFC. Like you either love him or you hate him. And some people like the Cinderella story of like I've changed my life kind of thing and I'm doing better now. You said he said his name is what Greg Hardy? Yeah, where's he at? Oh, way down there. Okay. Well, he's opening. Yeah, he's the first uh, fight on the main card. Okay. Um, and then you have those that are like, no, fuck that guy. He can never redeem himself. So it's always interesting to see what happens, win or lose. It's always a good fight. Kevin Holland, uh, Alex Oliveira, the other cowboy, Alex Oliveira. Great fight. Edson Barboza and Thug Nasty is a barn burner, as they say. Mm. That is a tough fight for Thug Nasty, but also a tough fight for Edson Barboza. He hasn't fought in a little while. And is he, isn't he older? He's a little older. Yeah, he's been in the game a long, long time. He is a veteran. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, you already know, man. We rocking with Thug Nasty, bro. We got all our money on Dark and Soul. 100%. He just signed a f- new four-fight deal with the UFC. Yeah, uh, Dana White ain't stupid. No, he's a star. Yeah, he they, is an they absolute know star. He's got star power. For sure. And he has that different kind of star power. Like, if you look at uh your other boy, uh Rainbow Kobe? Hair. Uh, Sugar Sean. Sugar Sean. He's got star power also in a different way. But having those two kind of personalities be the types of stars that your organization have, I think is great. Like Darkensaw, yeah. that that guy, you know how much of a region that star power covers versus on and, Twitch and, and shit? Yeah, and to me, to me, Bryce just represents the everyday man, blue collar, America, working class. I mean, I honestly like envy his his farm. Yeah, he'd he be out there fishing on his own property. I'm like, damn, I can't wait to get out of this blue city <laughs> um, where everybody's brainwashed and confused. And they just they just look at this Ukraine, Russia thing and don't realize that bitch ass Byron shut off our, our beautiful oil. We went straight Greta Thunberg and that empowered Putin or Putin. Right. So Putin. Pu- Putin's selling 600,000 barrels of, of fuel to us. So he's getting all that sh- money. He, he got Europe by the nuts. So, anyway, <laughs> you know, people don't be known. Uh, I'm starting to think we might have to rearrange the way we do shows and maybe put a third RPT out a week. Oh, shit. What were you going to say? No, no, no. I'm thinking, like, we might have to start recording Chingo Chats first. But anyway, back to UFC. Yeah, back to UFC. Uh, so, Rafael de Sanos and Renato... Uh, Mo- Rafael. Rafael. And, That's so uh, crazy that they do that with the R. Renato Moisiano. How are the R's ages? Um, how are double L's wise? True. Yeah. Good comeback. That was quick. <laughs> Very quick with it. And then the main event, bro. The main event, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I never knew how close Kobe Covington and Jorge Masvidal were in the past. I had no idea. I wasn't keeping up with UFC like that back then. These dudes are like brothers, bro. Yeah. They're close, close. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's crazy how they've also had a, their own feud come about over the recent years and and, but it's funny because it's kind of tough. If you really follow the two and we're fans of them, and let's just say you're also big into what's going on around the world and the country, Kobe Covington had a call from Donald Trump after he won the interim. I think he won the interim belt that night. And it's live on the pay-per-view. And they're like, did you watch that by chance? Uh-uh. So they were like, uh, he's he's doing his post-fight you know, victory speech with, I think, Laura Sanko. And somebody's like, Hey, you got a you got a call. Like you can hear him in the background. You got a call. It, it's tr- it's President Trump, and he's like talking. He's like, someone over here is telling me. You know, I got a Trump's calling me, and he's like, no, seriously. So he takes the phone. It's like, Kobe, I saw your fight. You know, fantastic fight. You're a great champion. Whatever, whatever. And he's like, he's geeking you out. You did very well. He's geeking out. He's like, holy shit. You know, Trump just called me and congratulated me. And then you got Mazudal, this you know uh, individual who's also got star power, who's a big star with 
Cuban roots talking about this other side as well. I'll, I'll, I'll also Republican as fuck. Exactly. So it's like people, I'm, I'm sure we're eager to try to like find ways to like, do you think snow the product thinks Cubans are racist for being like Republican? I would say anybody that's, that's, Putting that kind of stuff out would probably think the opposing side, no matter or, where you're from, is pretty racist. Satellites. Yeah, exactly. Like, but isn't that the the go-to assault? Um, wh- how, when do you believe? Let me ask you this. And and again, we're talking about UFC, but we're just gonna pivot. It's since, cultural. Since it's you don't you don't brought up. I Trump. did, but it's cultural. You don't you don't brought up the the, the bad man's name. <laughs> so, at what point do you think the average American is gonna be like, wow? I, for some reason, I don't. I don't see Trump as racist anymore. When do you think it's going to like, what's the tipping point where they're like, hey, I, I, I think I was lied to. And I'm starting to think that he just wanted America first, bring back manufacturing, jobs, low inflation, there higher was, wages for the working class. There was a couple of parts within the State of the Union itself that should have done it for a lot of people if you're really paying attention. One of them having been, and we didn't even mention this, but he said something to the effect of, because uh, we talked about kind of how there's there's literally Nazi fighters mm-hmm. Right over in there Ukraine. in Ukraine, and mm-hmm. he said, "You know, the strong Biden Byron says the strong people. You know, they're fighting with a valiant effort to d- defend their land or whatever." And had, they're Nazis. Had there been had that had Trump said that? Oh my God, the media would have gone crazy, right? But if you see that and you understand what you know, the they try to find the correlation between had it been him and what the media would have done, that might you know make your ears go up. But then also when Trump starts rolling out these uh, ad campaigns with this, these kind of clips in there, people's fucking minds are gonna melt. That's if anybody from the left, like anybody that thinks Trump's racist, are they going to actually sit through him and be like, this guy's making a lot of fucking sense and I haven't heard nothing racist. Um, And I will say this, right? When we were in line to vote the other day in the primaries and we're having some convos with fellow Republicans, (laughs) the MAGA type, not the rhino type. America first type. And exactly. And yo, you know what's interesting? I think I mentioned it to the people that were there. I said, you know what? A lot of people don't understand is that the Democrat Party has become the party of the donor class, the elites, Hollywood, the rich, the wealthy, the uh, big tech, Silicon Valley oligarchs, um, corporate interests. Like they've become the party of the big bucks. And then the MAGA first segment, the uh, America first segment of uh, Republican Party has become the the working class party like. It's just the truckers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And it's like people don't see that, and it's very unfortunate. Um, Also, the Democrats made a big miscalculation with Latinos. They thought we were going to fall for this. You're a person of color, and our country just had a major racial reckoning due to George Floyd, and don't you dare look at what the other side's talking about. However, they miscalculated because Mexican-Americans, especially in RGV, like in the Valley, were like, we weren't doing that bad up under Trump. We're not liking all this defund the police rhetoric. Um, you know, we we care about the economy. We're concerned with inflation, and we're thinking we're Republican now. I want to tie this back into uh, people with star power, like Snow, just because we use her as an example with her video, mm-hmm. or or a Masvidal or Kevin, whatever celebrities in general. I'm going to tie that into what Bianca was saying on War Room just the other day. I don't know if you caught it. It was earlier this week where mm-hmm. she she was basically kind of reporting to Bannon like what it was looking like in South Texas and what it was looking like, you know, leading up to the primaries about turnout uh, in regards to like voter turnout. And she was citing numbers that you weren't seeing anywhere in polls read to you on TV, right? They were saying like, oh, it's low turnout for Republicans. Oh, it's low turnout all, all the way around or whatever. Meanwhile, she's like, no, Stark County, blah, 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 this and that, 3,000% uptick in votes, blah, 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 up, you know, up, mm-hmm. up, up. And you weren't seeing that anywhere else. And then if you have people with star power, let's just say someone like a snow, that are telling you those kind of talking points without giving you any statistics for what uh, people are actually feeling out there. Like she's not maybe let's just say, or someone like her isn't too keen on knowing that there's an uptick in Hispanic voters in the primaries for registered Republicans or whatever. Like, well, if that's the case, then how can how can he be bringing back that shit? How can he be br- yeah. bringing back that racism? Bringing shit? back that racism. Like, like what? What exactly is racist? The general public's not seeing it that way. It's like, what's racist? Well, he don't want everybody to vote. Okay, who can't vote? Well, we need to do mail-in ballots so we could cheat. I mean, so that people that are 100 years old and don't and can't, they, they, they can mail it in. What was the first thing they asked you when you walked in to cast your, your, your vote? Um, What party? Okay, you voting Republican? Yup. All right, let me, uh, where's your ID? Exactly. 
All right, babe. let's start with that talk. Yeah, I even had my little um my uh, voter registration voter card. Yeah, good for just you. Just in case. Yeah, <laughs> good on you. But yeah, man, that those those talking points are so played out, and people with star power that continue to regurgitate those are just doing them them and their fans a disservice. Well. I think people are gonna start realizing once they start doing shows in South Texas and stuff like that, yeah, and or even West Texas, where like, shit. I remember going out there when I was still Lefty Larry, and I didn't really fully understand, but it, a lot of them were like, "Yeah, man, you know, we bought that oil over here, pimping." So, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think they're gonna realize once, once it's like once once most of the Latino population, because right now it's like. I think it's pretty evenly split. Yeah, I'm not it's mistaken. Pretty close, yeah. It's pretty fucking close. So once it becomes a thing of like, I'll give you an example, because I see it in Willie D's comment section, right? Oh, well, you know, those Latinos, they white adjacent and they want, they, they side with the whites more anyway. So it makes sense that a lot of them are sell out coconuts and they want to vote for Trump and Republicans. Well, anyway, once Latinos become mostly Republican, because they're about like, they, once they realize that we're culturally conservative, we're not about killing babies. You know, I mean, some are, but, um, you know, faith, family, country, things like that. I think they might be like, huh, maybe I need to reassess my geopolitical opinions. Maybe I need to reassess if Trump and DeSantis and these people are really all racist. And and what really did happen in J6? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe then they'll be like, oh, shit, I might <clears throat> want to change my tune. Like George Lopez, next time you come out here to Texas and perform, you're going to have to bring jokes and not. Hey, orale, fuck those Trumpers. Hey, fuck those Trump tars. You, that shit ain't gonna fly. So uh, let's pivot into Joe Rogan. Speaking of racism, <laughs> speaking of the N-word, uh, Freddie Gibbs, who is representing Gary, Indiana, um, I've actually, um, I've you know hung out with him a little bit, met him a couple times, spoke to him on the phone. Uh, super talented rapper. Uh, his backstory is interesting. So when he was uh, coming up in Gary, Indiana, mm -hmm. which which uh, politicians fucking when they killed the steel industry, Gary is, is that's where Michael Jackson's from. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's right there, like lip border of Chicago. Cause you have Chicago, Illinois. And as soon as you cross over to the Indiana state side, it's like saying you're going to Deer Park or Pasadena. Oh, right? okay. So boom, that's Indiana right, right there. there. It's right there. So Gary, Indiana is like a fucking, it's like saying Galveston, Houston to Chicago. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because no, yeah. you you staring at me like I had just had a thought about uh, that area, Deer Park, Pasadena area. Oh, okay, yeah. So basically, just picture it as a um, a satellite city, right? And you see weeds growing all around the schools. You just see the devastation that these politicians did when they took all the jobs. It's it's almost like part of the Rust Belt. It used to be booming, but um, now you now you have food deserts. Now you have like. I don't know what it is. Korean owned fried fish place. And that's where everybody has to eat. Basically, like mm. you're going to go spend your money with people that are not of your community. Uh, anyway, with that being said, Freddie Gibbs made his name on the underground. Uh, he had submitted a demo to um, I forget which record label it was. And the intern at the label was like, yo, I just struck gold. Check out this di this dude's demo tape. This motherfucker rapping his ass off. He was trying to get him signed. And I think that the label was like, you know, a lot of times they don't see the vision. So that gentleman who was the intern ended up becoming his manager. And the rest is history. He's He's been touring consistently. He's a big independent artist, just like, you know, just mm -hmm. like Snow. Big independent artist, big festivals, uh, a lot of uh, accolades collabs with like big producers and um and i think this might be his second time on rogan oh really yeah i don't remember mm -hmm. he was on there uh do you want to play some of the clip yes okay uh don't let me forget about pasadena and then talk about uh airbnb and, and real estate oh word all right yeah and then he had a, a comedian on there the host of the roast battle on um, brian moses because i believe who had Sorry, a go to race and shit? <laughs> Jumping it off. Right yeah, now. it's the last day of White Guilt Month. We gotta, you know, <laughs> we're going out with the bang. They're trying to get my man Rogan. You know, you can't be racist no more. You can try. All right. Can we say? Can we say nigga? You can. Okay. 
You can. Well, right. if I want to say, I'll just pause and then you just fill in the blanks. Just, right. Just so send anytime it off to there's me. a, a just video. Send it off to me, man. <laughs> just send it off to me, Joe. You can't say that shit, Joe, because no. you, you pissed niggas off when you did that compilation. It was funny as fuck, though. I can't even lie, but, you know. Well, I didn't mean it as a compilation. But they made a compilation. Oh, I am aware. And that shit was crazy. Yeah, yeah not good. But, they, but it, hey, man, look, I don't think you're a racist, my nigga. You my nigga. I'll Thank fuck you. with you. I appreciate so it. I don't, I don't Thank think, you, Mike. I never thought you was a racist. <clears throat> I just I'm think definitely you're not. just saying some shit you shouldn't have said. And a lot of us niggas say some stuff that we shouldn't say sometimes. It is what it is. Well, that's the only word that, like, you, you can't say no matter what. Nah, you got to give that to us. That's the thing. I want to tell white people right now. We you own it. You got to let us have that. Like, quit it's ours. <laughs> just let us have that nigga. We got it. You know what I mean? Like, so much power in owning thing, that. You know what I mean? Y'all already human trafficked us over here. Let us have it. It's, it's the most happen. powerful world. Uh, world. It's the world. most powerful word, in in the like what, not the English language. Yes. just every one of them. Right? Well, it's the most versatile too. Right. As far as like, it could either be hateful coming out of a white person's mouth or ignorant, or it could be for a black person it could be a punchline. It could be a term of endearment. Yeah. It it could be many things. Yeah. yeah. It's like what Bernie Mac said question. about motherfucker. Yeah. Motherfucker is you know versatile. See yes. niggas, same thing with nigga. Niggas for are now. niggas. It's niggas a noun. The person, place, or thing. Yeah. It's a lot of things. Yeah. I can't I can't wait till society gets to the point where like I'm not into Harry Potter, but you're not supposed to say Voldemort. Oh right. Right. I can't wait. I can't wait till society gets to the point where they can look back at this. Let's say twenty five years from now, right? And they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I remember when?" And just and just we a conversation could be had, and the word could just be said in a way that like you you took the power away from it, mm. so that people aren't hypnotized and triggered and controlled by who says it, how they say it, when they say it. Cancel them. Morgan Wallen, Wooty Woo, Joe Rogan, racist. Uh, he can't have scientists on no more. Talking about the jab because uh, remember that one time, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think that will be the ultimate healing process in our modern day society where we can all get together as human beings and look back objectively. Right. Like think about, you know, like when when Kanye uh, said, hey, we got to do Black Future Month. Right. And remember when Kanye said, oh, we own the word, you know, the N-word, and yeah. we own braids. We get to go around telling people, you can't wear braids because that's cultural appropriation. Appropriation. He's like, how fucking stupid is that? I think once Kanye becomes, here's my prediction, once Kanye becomes a larger, if that's possible, right, cult- right. cultural figure, and people stop listening to TMZ as they just call him crazy, no lo bajan de loco, ¿verdad? Right. When they finally stop calling him, calling him crazy, he becomes a bigger cultural influencer and he's able to break the spell of hypnotism. He could be like, black folk, let's move forward. Let's not look at the past. Black History Month is arguably a tool used by racists to control us. The N-word is arguably a tool by real racists to divide us and control us. Once they make that leap, in t- in towards STEM, like science, technology, engineering, math, once they make that leap to where it's like, no, we do just as well as Nigerians. We do just as well as Jamaican Americans. We do just as well as Indian Americans. We do, like, once that disparity is fixed and people's mindset and life strategy changes, because motherfuckers be trapping right here. I don't know if you ever seen it right there on Alabama. 100%. In a motherfucking school zone. Yeah. It's like, did somebody put this little store right here? And you see them in Fifth Ward. Mm-hmm. We're in Third Ward right now. As you as you uh, explore the city and you check out all different neighborhoods and the gentrification, you see these little corner stores. And it's almost as if the real races made sure they were there so that young black males can be like, um, I don't have a lot of options. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go ahead and get in the game. And now you hanging out. And they be up there early too, boy. I'll be taking my daughter to school and it's like, damn. I know, they're up early as fuck. They be, why? I'm up early because ain't enough like in the daytime. It's a Pimp C lyric. Like, mm. that's part of the game. Do you really want to be there after dark? No. You got to get up early. And then the fiends, no. Yeah. I'm giving y'all some good game right now, motherfucking Chingo Chats. <laughs> so let me make my point, right, so that we can assess this, uh, this Freddie Gibbs, Joe Rogan thing. I, I can't wait for society to do the real racial reckoning where it's like, wait, so you're telling me 
that only 316,000 slaves were brought to America, yet 3 million black people have voluntarily immigrated to America from Africa, from the Caribbean. You're telling me this racist ass country who had 316,000 slaves. You're telling me 3 million people are voluntarily. So can these two things be true at once? America has uh, 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 some, some very, a very checkered past and there was some hellish atrocities, human fucking humanitarian atrocities of slavery. Is that true? Yes. Is it also true that it's provided, it's come a long way and it's provided so much opportunity for people of color and people from all around the world and it's still the shit and we still the fucking best? Yes. Is it possible for those two things to be true? Of course. I think that needs to, um, maybe the only hope is Kanye, bro. <laughs> I think I think he might be the only one that could get through because why? Jay-Z still playing the old game of take off that red cap, come back home in the lyrics. Mm-hmm. When he did the collab with, with Kanye, he said, stop the red cap, come back home. Who's home, Jay-Z? Yeah. The Democrats? Hillary? Nancy Pelosi's home. The Democratic Party is home. That's a perfect example of what home. I was saying at the top of the podcast. Like people start that's real like, star power. He's in like the that. sunken place. Ooh, Kanye's in the sunken place. He's thinking for himself. Come back home. I don't yeah, I just don't get it. Like What's home? I don't I don't get how people can even us saying this will eventually somewhere down the line get taken out of context if this video surfaces because this is a Patreon episode, but still, I'm gonna make a clip out of that for sure. But people will just be like, can you believe that they said it would take Kanye to bring people to their senses? Well, well yeah, who listen else? to what we're saying. Yeah, who else? Like, I got my money on yay in terms of who actually has the clout culturally that who moves the needle in terms of fashion, music, production. Um, he's he's single handedly right now is like re engineering the music business. Like he's a nine times billionaire. Like, he, I don't know, dude, like in a week, he dropped a new single with the game. He dropped an album. He dropped a piece of hardware. He went up against Apple and Spotify. You know what I'm saying? He single-handedly is, like, taking over fucking Instagram. But I pray that people snap out and wake up. And then, and then to bring it back to Freddie Gibbs, I feel for rappers and celebrities in his position. Why? Because behind closed doors... I mean, his manager's white. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? He probably got... Dude, arguably, most of Freddie Gibbs' fans are white. I don't know if you knew that. Most people that go to hip-hop concerts are white. But, it's, but it depends. Well, yeah, I'm just using a general... Yeah, like, that was very general because Lil Boosie, he has a lot of white fans, but it's, he does the hood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm going to make this quick distinction. Here, here's the point I'm trying to make. A celebrity in the position of Freddie Gibbs in this chair. He's he's on live. There's cameras on him. So that means that everybody on Willie D's comment section is watching. All his black fans are watching. Uh, all the black gossip uh, complex. Who posted that video? Which is owned by white people. Yeah. Okay, it's owned by a billionaire named Mark Echo. I don't know if, you, if y'all knew that. But complex has got, got their little spoon out and shit like ooh let's race <laughs> they're like is there a rapper involved yes that means it could fit our hip-hop platform so the tough position he's in is he's having to say joe you shouldn't have said that right yeah, yeah. who's watching all his black fans are watching. The hood is watching. All the uh, gossip, all the gossip signs, black gossip signs, and uh, sites say cheese. All these little uh, world star. They ready to clip, clickbait, so they can get their money. So he's having to say, Joe, you shouldn't have said it. But behind closed doors, he's probably like, I know Joe Rogan ain't fucking racist. Yeah, of course. And I know, no, he, I know he's not just having me on to prove he's not racist. And here we are. Here we are. That was very well said, I gotta say. It's very long winded. It's very long winded. It's, it's clunky. It's, it's a clunky. Not, not clunky, not clunky at all. I think it was very well said. You sound like you're reading a script off the teleprompter. You're like, oh, hey, slow down, you know? Yeah. Like the pedal broke. Yeah. I can't control speed. That actually kind of reminds me real quick before we shift into the trailer for part three of Kanye's Oh, Doc. man, let's it? watch that. Yes. I think I've seen the trailer, but I wanna see the episode. I haven't seen the episode. Yeah, oh, it's not out yet, is it? Part I three? Think it, I, can, I think it dropped last night. Oh. Supposedly. 
It's dropping today. Oh, it's dropping tonight. Wednesday, yeah. I was up all night with the baby. Oh, yesterday was Wednesday. Today. So anyway, uh, Foo's Gone Wild. They posted a little. Did you see any of their uh, State of the Union posts by chance? What, what are you, they doing? Uh, got the pom poms out for Biden? Um, not really. I think the only thing I really saw was this, one, which was just weird. Uh, but I'll play it for you over here, just because why not? We didn't play on RPT. Decades of abuse. Decades of abuse. Us. Mm, baby, you looking hella fucking firme today. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. Let me ram it. That was it. <laughs> so they did a voiceover of uh, the way Pelosi was standing up. Rubbing her hands because she didn't know when to clap because the speech was so bad. Uh, I'm done wasting my time with Foo's Gone Wild, bro. It's a lost cause. Bro. Oh, for sure. They're going to go down. They're going to they're gonna have their pom-poms in hand, and they're going to go down with the ship. <laughs> All right, here we go. Genius, Kanye Trilogy, Act 3, teaser, Netflix. Every day, every moment, it's like the best day of my life. Each day keeps getting better because I had all the days before and this day. My mom always taught me you have to believe it first. And they say overconfident, like that's a bad thing. I'm going to tell you how I feel about me. I am the greatest. It's a new day, baby. It feels good to be home. At this point, Kanye was arguably the biggest artist in the world. The question was, where would he go from here? You know, we only got 100 years here. So, got to go after it. While well, it's our time. Kanye. Okay. Um, he's so ahead of his time. That that's why I feel like he's the hope for mm. for waking people up and disabusing them of lies. You know, like I, I, I am a huge fan of when he said we got to do Black Future Month and how and like I said earlier, how he was like, "Ooh, we own the N word. Ooh, we get to police other cultures who, yeah. tr- who try to wear braids. He's like, that's not power. There's n- there's no power there. There's no political power. There's nothing there. You can't do nothing with that. And, you know, I'm not black, so I can't go around telling black folk that. But, hey, Kanye's ahead of his time, and uh, hopefully people catch up. Let's see. What the, I remember this Family Guy clip, but I don't know exactly what it was. I'm so upset about it. I never even knew you liked boats. Hey, hey, boating's in my blood. Ever since my great-grandfather, Huck Griffin, rafted down the mighty Mississippi. What did you just call me? I, I, I thought that was your name. That is our word. You've got no right using it. Hey, 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 I'm cool. I'm cool. No problem. Could, could you pass me the or N-word, Jim? <laughs> N-word, Jim is all I remember. And I was like, wait, I wonder what that clip was about. It's from Huckleberry Finn. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So Huckleberry Finn, it was uh, <clears throat> N-word, Jim. <laughs> but yeah, uh, hey, I'm cool. I'm was, cool. Was that America Ferrera getting paid to promote cactus water? Yes, it is. See, when you're on the left, you have so much access to money. <laughs> All right. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, you know, man, when, when you're so close to the problem and, and when, you've been, um, when you've been told from the time you're little that, like, this word holds power, this word is racist, but yet you use it every day and it's in all the songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, like, it's almost like when they say climate and white rage are our biggest enemies. It's almost like they're telling black kids, the main thing you got to worry about is systemic oppression. And this is critical race theory and it'll free you. And it's like, no, that's not, that's not what you should be telling kids. Like you should be telling kids fortune 100, fortune 500 countries. I mean, companies want to hire people like you with good life strategy. You're going to have, you could, you could pick, you're going to have so many options. Like you have privilege. You know, uh, this might be a very interesting take, but I'm on a like, lot of caffeine here. And let me just say this. The uh-oh. word should uh-oh, go uh-oh. on. Uh-oh. Spicy take. That's a problem. That's what it's going to be after Spicy I say this. Spicy take. That's, 
We should go one of two ways with this. This is the America First Freedom of Speech is number one kind of a podcast, kind For of a sure. crew. But uh, it should either get retired like a jersey that can never get used Talk again. Talk about the N-word? Yeah. Okay. N-word gym should never be said ever. We should hang it up from the rafters somewhere and everybody as a whole collaboratively come together and say, that was us at one point and now no one can ever say it again. Or you keep using it in your songs, you keep using it however you want, and depending on the context of the way it was used, you understand that it was a term of endearment, it was a, a punchline to somebody's joke, or whatever, and you just let it be another part of free speech. It has to go one of those two ways. I mean, obviously obviously people are going to say, well, if you're white or if you're not black, you shouldn't be allowed to say it, right? That's really the the conundrum, right? And it's like, motherfuckers don't, some people don't want to say it. Some people, it's like, we ain't got no reason to say it. I guess the future that I'm trying to describe is to where it's almost like, how can I explain this shit to you? Um, pretend you have like a kukui, like a yorona, like a, a boogeyman. Pretend you're trying to describe this to a young somebody, like how, how a five year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. E L I five. Explain like I'm five. There you go. All right. So, so this word has been attributed all this energy and power, right? It's become this boogeyman, and it can be hurtful because it does have roots from a very. It comes from a very hurtful place, right? So. There's no taking away the fact that historically it's been used as a cudgel, right? So, so, but I would argue that the leftists, the Marxists, the ones that want to divide us and hold black people down have made it extra scary and have attributed these things where like only you can say it, no one else and things like that, right? I, I just can't wait for, let's say, someone like a Kanye or for there to be this collective consciousness of like to where in academia, let's just say hypothetically, they can it could be discussed to where even the professor could be like, oh, okay, uh, Timothy, when was your first time hearing a, you know, and then be like, say it, right? <laughs> but not in a mean way, to where there could be black kids and black women and black people, black students in the class, and not be affected by it, not be triggered, and just be like, yes, we're having a discussion about this sound that comes out of humans' mouths, and and it was, it was, you know, it became this thing where like, you know, we're gonna cancel Joe. And all, you know what I'm saying? Like you made it like Voldemort versus I want to see that future where it's like it no longer has power over us. You know, we can we can have a, a further debate as to who should be allowed to say it. When can you say it? Should there be context? That way, the man from Netflix would have got fired. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that one? Yeah. For saying it in the meeting. Um, but, you know, that that's my take. And and when Freddie Gibbs was on Ghetto Boys podcast, they asked him, how do you feel about your white fans? saying the n-word while you're on while you're on stage go and he was like okay i think he said uh i think if i'm if i'm not mistaken he said they bought a ticket <laughs> they paid the money that's what he said hold on hold on i'm paraphrasing okay they bought a ticket they paid the money i want them to have a good time and, and something or other however don't come at don't come up to me after because here that's when they're tor that's when you're torn and you got to remember you got black folk watching you that you don't want to be called a sellout. You don't want to be called the black face of white supremacy. So he threw in a caveat of like, but after the show, don't come up to me like, Hey, N word, this, this, and that, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know what you're saying, but it's also, kind of a cop out answer. Um, again, man, formalities I understand are, are very useful for society to a degree, but people we have taken, we are a silly, silly people. We have taken so many things so far when it comes to just like, walking on eggshells because of a certain thing or a certain political stance or a certain messaging. I'm like, are you a good person or not? Like, isn't that really what matters? Yeah. But any, anyhow, yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan, speaking of more of him, he's back on the commentating roster this weekend for the, for the fight that we were talking about earlier. And, uh, it was funny when, when Dana was asked about it, he was like, yeah, Rogan's back on this week. You know, he was off last week. You know, that's yeah, he's back. And Daniel Cormier is off. So that's where it is. And kind of just like, like what, how much of a, how big of a deal are reporters, reporters, I say, trying to make of, you know, oh, Rogan's back now, huh? After uh, con some controversial weeks there, huh? Like, like I, I, I'll give you an example, man, because we're on the subject of this um, and we're about to pivot. But um, imagine, to all the Latinos listening, imagine if the word beaner, right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Imagine if like coconut or beaner, let's just use beaner, right? Because that mm -hmm. might be the one that's, or spick. Let's just pretend it's spick, right? Imagine if the powers that be, you know, politicians, you know, because they need racism as a tool mm -hmm. so that you don't pay attention to the other candidate or other party. Imagine if the word spick was was so like only we could say it. 
like we probably should do a skit about this, like on some SNL type shit, mm-hmm. where it's like, oh my god, the S word. You know, like we need to see, like in this alternate universe where we're the number one minority and like we're the ones that are being used, uh, uh, used as like a pawn. Mm-hmm. Then the N word would just roll off people, and it'd be like, that doesn't hurt me because I'm not an N word. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> it doesn't affect me because I'm not what you're calling me. Can you imagine for a minute? A world where the word spick is the equivalent to the N word. See, we can't even say it on here because y'all not ready to have like an adult professional conversation where it's like it's possible to be uttered without the hate behind it. Because mind you, like shit, you know, arguably in a way, a black family took me in when I was in high school. Right. Mm. It was like my best friend in high school who happened to be black and his mother, who was obviously black. Like, looked out for me. I was in New Jersey by myself. And you know what I'm saying? Like, anywhere, anyways, that's just that, that, that's neither here nor there. But imagine if the word spick was, like, the equivalent of this debate where it's like, oh, my God, Joe Rogan said the S word. And, like, hey, as Latinos, we're the only ones allowed to say the S word. How goofy. Like, just for a second. Like, I understand why people with the N word, it's like, yeah, but Chingo, come on. You know, hey, you can't draw that. I'm hypothetically saying how abused would we be as a people if the S word was given so much energy, power and control to where they use it as the shiny silver object, like rattling keys in children's face to where it's like you're going to now control me like this is what you need to think because this man uttered the S word. You know, when you go down to the to the I hate I hate the term root causes, the root causes <laughs> like Kamala. And shit. But it, when, at, at the root of the word, I believe it just came from the Spanish word negro. So if you took Rogan's compilation and just use like, let's just say you're talking about a, a black crown, you know, el, el color negro or whatever. And you take that compilation and just use the, the Spanish word instead of what transformed into the racial epithet that you hear these days. It would lose all meaning. You would lose all you know, there would be a different context. Right. It, it's just strange that it went from that to what it is now and it's never changed. It's held that power for however long it's been now. And then if you really want to like get nitpicky, imagine if you're like mixed, you're half white, you're half black. Mm -hmm. Are you allowed to rap along lyrics? Are you allowed to be a rapper who writes those types of lyrics? Why wouldn't you, if somebody like fat Joe, who's from the Bronx, isn't even black can can be the N word police that all the people in the comments said he gets. And he's the N word police. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it gets it gets tricky, right? Because it's like, well, you see, I'm from the Bronx and, you know, historically, Puerto Ricans have shared the plight of the urban, you know, African-American. And therefore, uh, therefore, Fat Joe uh, can judge Joe Rogan. It's all simulation. We're living 100 percent. We're living in the simulation and <laughs> we're like an alien ant farm. You know, there's a band with that name. I love right? alien. Ant OK, farm. so we're an alien ant farm and we're actually having to waste our breath. We're wasting our breath and energy on this instead of instead of living in the future, which is, oh, do you know how many black billionaires there are? There's going to be so many black billionaires in the future once people disabuse themselves from the control. That's how I look at it. This word is being used for control. It's being used to manipulate you, uh, tug at your heartstrings and, and be able to get you so like riled up emotionally. Hey, this is how much of a simulation we're living in. I just pulled up my Spotify. Look what I was listening to on the way here. N-word, N-word. Hey, N-word. man. Wow. Hey, whoa, bro. Okay, it's Hicks Tape by Morgan Wallen. At Wallen. the top, man. Just go to the top of oh. the list. Oh, Alien Ant Farm. Jesus Christ. Why oh, you start all at the, I see is... Why uh, you start at the bottom? Who does I, that? All I see is uh, Morgan Wallen. Well, it's moving. Oh, it's, no, but I'm at the list. Okay, got it. Relax, man. You act like I'm about to yell out NWA and shit <laughs> and say the whole name without the acronym. And uh, shit. No, I'm just joking. And Los Tucanes de Tijuana, you know? Yeah. Ch- I saw some Chingo Bling on there, my brother. Oh, dude. It, I, for a decade, it's man, been in my Hey, man. Playlist. Shout out to my music fans, bro. <laughs> um, I get a check every month, and this this month, it was healthy. So I'm, I'm very happy to say that my streams, my sales, my plays have gone up. Not down. Yeah, I have a. Uh, it I have grew. A, I have a uh, media farm where I have a bunch of phones with Chingo Bling albums just playing <laughs> over and over again. I don't know who did it. <laughs> uh, honestly, though, I got to give props to Michael Berry because uh, he definitely shouted out the Vamos Brandon song. Right. And I definitely saw an uptick on those sales. Like a lot of people, a lot of listeners of the Michael Berry show purchased the single. And a lot of them told me firsthand when I was at a, a Michael Berry event. Yeah recently boom at the top right there so what else we got man moving on from the joe rogan yeah um 
Well, we got other stuff in in like entertainment and media and whatnot, but uh, let's let's pick a couple. Let's pick like two of them. Which, by the way, we didn't even celebrate Texas Independence Day on RPT this week. That I was on Monday. Know. Too many things going on. We're bad spicks. Yeah, you <laughs> spick, please. It should be like. Would you be allowed to say spicka? Just because it needs because <laughs> it needs two syllables. It don't sound as cool. You can't be like spick, please. Uh, it's gotta be like spicka, please. <laughs> Lizzo with her little thick self. Is creating a new beauty standard. I am a body icon. You can't use the words little and thick with her in the same sentence. You can't use the word uh, health, diabetes, (laughs) obesity, armpit fat. Um, You can't say uh, visceral fat. You can't say BMI. You can't say inflammation and edema. You're going out of town tomorrow, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, sir. What time are you flying out? Uh, I think 3.30 or so. In the afternoon? Mm-hmm. You probably had a busy morning. Why, what's up? No, well, I, I had a, uh, I have a place I'm pretty sure we're, we're, we're going to be able to go do our body fat. A Dexa? Yeah, but you probably going to. I know, I know a place too. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And the good thing about the place that I might be going to is that they have all my old records. Oh, that's good. So you'll be able to see all my fluctuations. Okay. All right. No, that's fine. Yeah, Liz Unless you here. got a hookup. Well, that's what I was getting at. Okay. Okay. For yeah. sure. Okay. I bet. I, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Oh, thank you for... What's going on with Lizzo? Taking your time so. to pick that up. Um, she gave an interview to People Magazine where she's basically saying that she hopes to create a new beauty standard uh, that one day... I can't read it from here. She explained that she's, quote, stepping into my confidence and my power to create what she calls my own beauty standard. And one day that will just be the standard, Lizzo said. Oof. Well, yeah. hey, wait till there's another pandemic. You ain't going to be mm. on this earth <laughs> that long. You ain't, it's, you ain't going to be a standard. You're going to be up under that, up under that, in that coffin. Yeah, that's another one of those things where, why, not why, I can't even wrap my head around it. It's just like you just try to, people, to try to tell people to like better themselves, build better habits, you know, try to build a strong immune system and blah, blah, blah. And that's all, it's all, it, it's, it's, make, they make it seem like it's hurtful. Like you telling somebody that is hurtful in a way. And also kind of racist and fatphobic. It's a clown world, man. It's upside down. You know what we should try to really push more is we got to make it a recurring theme, especially on RPT, of like how to discern and, and kind of like um, how to deconstruct media, right? Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm, I'd mm-hmm. argue I'd argue that the average normie who's just kind of perusing complex.com and they're just kind of like going about their day and they don't really second guess the food pyramid and they don't second guess that, oh, we all got to put Ukraine fucking avatars now, right? Right. Because the powers that be are manipulating us. I feel that the average normie who sees that story for Lizzo, they might, they might just gloss over it and not think anything of it. Like, huh, so this big old fat girl is supposed to be the fucking standard? Or like when they put obese people models on the cover of like um, what is Sports Illustrated and things mm-hmm. like that, like why is it only odd to people on the right usually? Is it maybe there's a healthier distrust of media or there's more common sense? Or like let us know in the comments, let us know in the Discord. When you see stories like this, do you instantly, instantly say, well, this is fucking bullshit because this, this girl fat in the motherfucker. This is a girl about two and a half tons. <sighs> talking she, about I am the standard. She's about the size of a dually, you know? And that's not bueno for the overall heart and brain and such. Yeah, man. Yeah. Everything gets out of whack, man. Hormone levels and I mean your uh your your gut biome. I mean you your your immune system gets really weak. That that's what the fuck is missing from this complex Lizzo yeah. story. Yeah. It's like Lizzo is tripping because she wants to be sick. That's, you know, none, that none against heavy people. Like, I know there's different issues. People got thyroid. No, and sure, this sure, and sure. That. I'm not trying to pick on heavy people, but I'm picking on the media right now because they're encouraging this girl. Like, let me ask y'all this. If Lizzo wasn't uh, 600 pounds, <laughs> would she be as popular? Like, I mean, what song? How many songs she had? Two? I don't know. Any. Would she still, if she was like an average, watch what happens when she loses weight. She's not going to lose weight. But if she does, they not going to pay as much attention to her. Mark my motherfucking words because we're in a clown world. It's goofy. It's upside down. Everything's upside down. Um, You know, this might be taking a little bit too far, but I was just curious as, as to what she weighed, if it even had it anywhere. <clears throat> oh, obviously, she don't think it's a, that much of a standard if she ain't transparent. 
Like she needs to tell, hey, say little mama, you want to be the standard? Let us know your BMI. Let us know your visceral fat. What else? I mean, can she fit on the DEXA? <laughs> no, no, no. They got to put two DEXAs together and then divide by two at the end. Eesh, the little radiation turns into a lot of radiation. I got them. So she's five foot ten. She's pretty tall. Five foot ten coming in at about 308. Nah, I don't buy it. I think she's more than that. You think she's more I think than she's that? more than that. I think she's I more agree than with that. you. I think she's more she's than that. She's got to be more than that. She's at least 375. She's pushing 380. <laughs> she's pushing 380. She's pushing 400? Four, probably 420. 420? Yeah. Think about it. Think about it. You see her shape, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now add in her height. So right. she's a big, tall, thick girl. Right. She's not like a little short, thick girl. Because mm. if she was a little short, thick girl, I'd be like, okay, I'll give her about 320. But she's 5'10, bro. She's pretty tall. You know what I'm saying? Either way, you're breaking threes, you know. Pushing 18 wheels. <laughs> she part of the Freedom Convoy. <laughs> She's like a Optimus Prime. What are those down uh, the road? Yeah, what are those uh, hot shot trucks that run some shit to Dallas for you real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she wanted them. <laughs> she wanted them. Hey, let's segue with something before we wrap up today that I wanted to not forget to mention because we, we always talk about real estate and Airbnbs oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that yeah. kind of stuff. Let me know. The number three. The number three Airbnb location in the United States is right around our neighborhood, and it probably will surprise you. All right, uh, you said uh, Deer Park, Pasadena, or what? Right. Oh, damn, I did say it earlier. It's uh -huh. Pasadena. Number three in terms of like the most rentals? Yep. Why? The most profitable. Huh. The most prof. The third. Maybe because the property is cheaper, yet you can still charge. You are very close to Galveston. This is what the article claimed. Very close between downtown Houston and Galveston, kind of right in the middle, and an abundance of the people that are renting these at an average of about two hundred dollars a day, is uh, people that work in the medical center, NASA, and refineries. Oh, because the refineries over there, NASA's yeah. closer to over there. Medical center, kind of. We're we're closer to the medical center, but you can get to it. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. So if you guys are looking in the area and you're like, man, what, what do I look at? Read, read, read stuff about that. Read okay. about the top three. Send that to Marisol because if I were to suggest like, hey, um, you know, my old neighborhood, you know, uh, Southeast Woodridge, you know, Grand Ole Park, Pecan Park, East End, you know, we kind of over there by uh, the oil. I mean, uh, the, the refineries, refineries and yeah. we over there going towards Galveston. We're off the Gulf Freeway. She'll be like, mm, <laughs> no. Yeah, I think uh, I think I think Don said she had a house over there probably 10, 15 years ago, and um, it has it, it had she still had it like you're talking about crazy, uh, wow appraisal now. Well, yeah, man, that's I mean that's the old neighborhood to where it's like shit. I mean, I'd love to. She got to convince Mighty Soul. I don't. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, anyway, on, and on that, we got some closing thoughts uh, of the day of the week. You're back on tour in McCown this weekend. Any, anything Anything else coming up on like on the road? Do you have any like guest spots or, or radio guest sets or anything you might be doing that you know of yet? Or are you just kind of making your way through the cities, you know, doing promoter feet on the ground, boots yeah. on the ground? Yeah, man. I'm telling you, man, 80% of this game is you're playing promoter. The other 20%, you actually get to be on stage being funny. Um, well, spoiler alert, um, the boy Chad Prather reached out. From uh, Blaze. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, he said, what's up? Um, Adam Carolla's people reached out. They said, what's up? So hopefully, God willing, I'll be on Chad Prather's show, Si Dios Quiere, soon when I'm in the Dallas area. And uh, and then hopefully, God willing, um, when I'm on the West Coast doing shows, Irvine, Brea, Ontario, Oxnard, I'll be able to stop by Adam Carolla's legendary show. And uh, it could be spicy. And y'all could get a whole bunch of clickbait, and we'll have a debate about the S word. Spit. You can't say it. We own it. Oh, uh, are you going to film for sure this year, your Houston set? Or is that still something that... I should. I li I'd like to. I Actually, if um, if like Juan Perez rolls with us more to some of these cities, uh, he's real good about documenting. Um, so maybe uh, we'll, we'll take one of these cameras and stuff and start doing an Andrew Schultz style. You know what I'm saying? Where we Word. Have, uh, always have content. But in the meantime, man, I'm over here trying to... Like, I, I ain't made it to jujitsu in two weeks in a row. Um, my boy just texted me like, man, you going to make it tonight? <sighs> it's been one of those, bro. 
With that said, more time. Just we're gonna more we're gonna. I mean, everything just keep sharing the clips and the podcast. Let this grow, and uh, the shows will eventually just sell themselves out. You won't have to be doing no radio spots and stuff. Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for uh, always tuning in, telling a friend, spreading the word, making the clips, sharing the clips, and of course, all the members of the Thea on the Discord. Uh, they're definitely front lines, tip of the spear, shoulder to the wheel, action, action, action. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing the clips. Signal, not noise. Signal, not noise. Hey, I just want to bring the heat, man. I just want to, um, I just want to live up to the hype on stage and let people be thoroughly entertained and get some good, healthy belly laughs. And I can't wait. Get your tickets now. Chingobling.com. We're hitting 30 cities this year. Legalize Freedom Tour. This has been Chingo Chats. Sass.